Okay, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Skip Sauls. I work on the PM team for Einstein Analytics. And we're gonna talk to you today about the Einstein Analytics developer experience. And I've got two of our architects here. I'm gonna let them do a quick introduction. Hi, I'm Chris Jolly. And hi, I'm Mike Timmerman. And we're gonna dive deep into some aspects of the, the dev experience you may not be familiar with. Um, before we get too far, we always have to put up our forward-looking statement. Um, we're gonna show mostly production things today, but we've got a few really cool new things we wanna show you. And keep in mind that these things could change before they get to GA. You've probably heard this numerous times, but we have to reinforce that. Don't make any buying decisions on the cool stuff you're gonna see here. Uh, but we are working on getting those into your hands. Um, we've got a fairly packed agenda, so we won't belabor these slides too much. Um, but we're gonna show you a few things about the dev experience and then dive deep into certain areas. Um, we're going to assume that you have some familiarity with Einstein Analytics or Einstein Discovery. Um, we're not here to do a big overview and demo of those things, but we will start with a quick overview of a few of the assets, just so we kind of level set things. Um, you'll hear us talk about data sets. Um, this is basically the way you define the shape of data that goes into analytics. We'll also talk a bit about data flows. How do you get things into it? You might be familiar with terms like ETL or ELT. Basically that aspect of it, how do you transform things and get it from Salesforce or other data sources into analytics. And then a thing called a lens for looking at the data, um, effectively a query plus a view together. And you've probably used these in analytics if you've gone in and you know, explored data sets and that kind of thing. And then the thing people mostly think about when they think of Einstein analytics are the dashboards. And that's the curated views with all of the you know, bindings and widgets and steps and all the great stuff there. So we're gonna show you those, but mostly using them in an embedded and standalone app type sense. So some things you may not always be familiar with. And we're gonna talk a bit more about some other assets, but I'm gonna let Chris and Mike talk about those in their sections as they'll go a little deeper on those aspects. So what do we mean when we talk about the developer experience? So who here has uh, a dev background on the platform or off the platform? Okay, good, this is the right audience and that's who we wanna to talk to. So we're talking about things like um, components, APIs, packaging, you know, security, sharing rules, um, how do you install these applications, how do you interact with them, all the types of things you might wanna do when you want to use analytics as part of your application. So, um, you know, a lot of times if you look at a demo, people say, yeah, we're gonna go into Analytics Studio, we're going into our app, we're doing everything there, and it's a very data scientist, um, you know, BI type, type viewpoint. But a lot of the people who use it are using it inside of applications like Lightning Experience. And a lot of our customers say, hey, you know, that's really cool, but I wanna do something more than just embed that chart or that dashboard in there. I want to make it active. So we're gonna talk a bit about some of those things today and how you build and deploy and work with those. So this is just kind of an overview of things. Um, we like to point out that we run in the Salesforce data center. We are part of the standard Salesforce ecosystem. And where possible, we use all of the standard um, things like packaging and APIs and security and so forth. So um, we are properly part of the Salesforce platform. So if you know and love Apex and Visual Force and Lightning components and the APIs and things like that, we work with all of that correctly. Okay, I'm gonna let Chris come up here and talk about app templates. Hi, so uh, what are app templates? Um, templates is probably a bad name. Uh, it's more really a, an application framework for developing vertical analytics applications that you can deploy and you can version and you can upgrade. Um, in its simplest form, it's a collection of dashboards, lenses, data sets, and data flows, and XMD, conditional formatting, and, and Einstein discovery stories, and sample data, and things like that. But what we'll see is it, it, it's more than that. Um, and all of our internal applications uh, that you can get from, when you go to create an app, you can start with a blank app, or you can create an app from a template, or create a dashboard from a template. That's all powered by templates. So we're using them heavily internally, and our goal is to you know, deliver 100 of those, and the ISVs will deliver hundreds more. So if you want to create apps that are 
available in studio um, and built on analytics, you should be really looking at templates. And, and why templates? Um, so like I said, they're, you know, it's a collection of assets. It provides you some additional things besides just bundling an app itself. Um, but the main reason why templates are is because we allow you to do a custom install. And, and why do you need a custom install? Because all orgs are different. Um, it's something we found out. Um, you know, everybody's got custom objects. They enable dif different features. They have different definitions of date and is one and those kind of things. And you needed to be able to discover that, whether it's automatically or run them through a wizard. And based off the answers of those questions, we want to morph our install such that it fits their org. And then we want to be able to rem remember those questions so that when we do an upgrade later on, we can, when a new version of that template comes out, we can install that. Um, we can also do things like org readiness. Um, can this org accept this app? Does it have the right amount of data? Does it have you know, the right shape? Does it have the right features? Uh, so we can upfront detect whether or not the org is, is ready for, for this template. And we run you optionally through a wizard. And um, you can customize that wizard as much as you want. Um, or you can just declaratively say, these are basically my questions. We call them variables. And we can prompt the user for the answers to those questions. But it's fully customizable with your own Visual Force pages, your own APEC classes if you want. Or you can accept the default behavior. Um, we support the full development lifecycle. And I'm going to kind of get into a little a quick example of that using the SFDX uh, analytics plugin. Um, but we can go from app to template and template to app. You can create many apps from that template. You can, what we call, have called as a master app, where you can update that app and then update your template from that. Um, you can then use Salesforce, Salesforce DX to pull that app, pull that template out of the org, and then check it into um, GitHub or Perforce, whatever your source code control system is. But the idea now is that the source of truth is the file system, or it is GitHub. Um, you can package those, app, those templates on the App Exchange, sell them, and people can create apps from those. Uh, there's three ways to kind of create an app from a template. Um, you can do it in, they can do it in Analytics Studio, where they'll select it, and it'll run through a wizard. Your, your template would appear in there, and I'll show you that. Um, you can do it as part of an install, and write some code in an Apex class and say automatically create this app behind the scenes. Um, you can also, we also have lightning components such that you could build your own UI for creating these if you want. Uh, we support versioning of the templates and we support upgrade. So when a new template's available, they'll, the user will know it and they can either upgrade their existing app in place or they can create a new app from that template, whatever they want to do. So uh, getting started. Um, there's kind of a couple ways you can get started, but the simplest way, um, I'm going to show you a little example of a GitHub repository that, that starts with a template, and you can modify that template. But you can either start with a template or start with an app. But in this case, we're going to start with an app. And you put all your assets under the same folder, and um, then you convert that app to a template. And you can either do this. We have an API call, or as you'll see, we have a command line that will do that in the SFDX plugin. Uh, you export that template. Uh, you can either do that through the Metad API or, again, through SFDX, and, again, check it in or package it however you want to do it. And then optionally, um, so at that point, you have a working template. But optionally, you can create a wizard. And to, declare, to create a wizard, it's basically just declare a bunch of questions. And we will automatically generate the wizard for you, but you can override any one of those pages if you want to make it look a little nicer. Um, you can create an Apex class to inspect the org, at, org ahead of time to make sure they might have certain stuff. You can answer some of those questions automatically, or you can prompt them for it. Um, and then what you do is, once you have the answers to those questions, you can create a bunch of rules. And those rules are kind of JSON-based rules. And what they can do is then, based off those rules, you can conditionally include some dashboards. You can delete stuff out of dashboards. You can morph the JSON. You can kind of do whatever you want. You can do all the CRUD operations you want on the JSON itself. But the idea is you have answers to the questions, whether they were gathered automatically or you prompted them for them. You run them through these rules, and you morph the JSON. And then that leads to your custom install. And then we remember those answers for the next time you do that. 
And then you can add release notes, you can add preview images and all that stuff. So you get a lot of functionality out of the box and then optionally you can kind of add all this stuff. Uh, so where do I get started? Um, first thing you probably want to do is install the plugin. Um, get familiar with SFDX and then we have an SFDX plugin for analytics. Um, there's, we're putting out a sample out there. I don't know if this website's actually public yet. I think we're gonna hand out the uh, quick start cards. Um, they actually have a public website, but we're working to make this public, and we're gonna put more and more samples out there as, as we go. There's a developer guide around templates, and then there's a trailhead around templates too. So kind of a lot of places to get started. Um, let me start off with a quick little example here. And so here's that repository I was talking about. Normally I would just clone this, um, you know, get clone. I've saved time, I've already cloned it. Uh, I've got this in my directory. Um, the first thing I wanna do is create a, uh, so I've already cloned this repository and the first thing I wanna do is Sorry. Um, I'm gonna create a scratch org from this. And this takes a little bit of time, but it's, it's, as you'll see, it's not that much time. And what we do, these scratch orgs are pooled, and the idea is it will spin up an org really quickly, and it will already be provisioned for to accept Wave, so Wave Studio will be enabled, and we'll have an org ready to go. Hopefully this takes only a few more seconds. Okay, it's done. And then the first thing I can do is I can open that org. So here I am in analytics, actually not in analytics but I will go to Analytics, Analytics Studio, pop-up blocked, pop -up blocked. <laughs> always allow, done, it's kind of weird that it did that, okay, and I've got in here, I've got no apps, um, well except for my private folder of that, I have no dashboards, and as you can see, this is where analytics, this is where templates get surfaced, this, when you click on create dashboard, I can say, you know, from a template. So we've got plenty of templates out there for dashboards, and I can also say create an app from a template. So if you wanna have your template in this list, you, you gotta use templates. So um, IS, we fully support ISVs getting in this list. We're gonna build out this list, um, and you guys should look into to getting your own in here. So, and then when I pick a template, I can either, it shows some preview inf information about the, the, the template, um, some little bit of data here, and I can continue. And this one does a pr an org check that says, hey, you're not really ready yet. This, this, this thing requires some action before you, to, for you to do before you can even install this, this template. Okay, so um, the next thing I wanna do is show off a few more commands here, but um, if I do just SFDX help, one thing you'll notice is I have the analytics plugin already installed, and I can, um, and I can list, and you'll see no templates, but if I do a dash A, you'll actually see all the internal templates. And what I wanna do is quickly deploy my template so um, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna push this stuff up there. And then if I do a list again, you'll actually see mine here. And it's a mortgage calculator. And actually, if I don't wanna show all the internal templates, so I'm just gonna do a regular old list and you'll see my template there. And then what I can do is I can create an app from that template, um, or actually it'll just show up in this list. 
and I see it here, mortgage calculator. And it's, I'm accepting the default stuff here, um, but it runs through the wizard and And this will kick off a flow. Normally, th this one's pretty quick, but normally if there's a data flow associated with it, it might take a while. But this one actually doesn't have a data flow as associated with it, so it's pretty quick. And my app's complete. And now I can go in here and I can look at the app. And what I can do now is I can make changes and I can export those changes out. I can, just, I can tie this, this app to the template. And, uh, one template can, a template can have a master app, and that master app is the only one that's allowed to update that template. So you associate those uh, two apps. It's all part of the quick start guide. Um, in lieu of time, I'm not gonna do that, but um, templates, very powerful, um, and uh, you should be using them if you wanna get your uh, apps deployed. So, thank you. Mike. Oh, where'd the slide deck go? All right, so my name is Mike. I'm here from the Einstein Discovery team. And in winter 19, Einstein Discovery has integrated with Einstein Analytics. It's now a first class thing in analytics. Um, I'm not really here to tell you, as Skip said, I'm not gonna tell you how to use Einstein Discovery, but I will show you some of the things that are in it um, so that I can explain the API example that I'm about to do. Uh, because I'm a dev, like most of you, or all of you, and that's where my heart is. So the first major asset in Einstein Discovery is called a story. If you haven't seen Einstein Discovery yet, um, this may be a little bit new to you. The general idea is you've taken an analytics data set where you have all your beautiful curated data, all this stuff that you've been working on, you run dashboards on it, you explore it with lenses, and you would like Einstein to actually go into your data and help you understand some of the information, some of the things that are happening in your data set that might not be necessarily obvious to you when you are just browsing it using Explorer. So, Again, that first class entity is a story. You start by saying, I would like to maximize margin. I would like to minimize time to close. I would like to maximize customer satisfaction, right? Um, and then when we do that and we create that story, we do a whole bunch of statistical analysis on the data set. And then we also build a predictive model. That's what backs the, the story process, right? And allows us to explain what's going on inside your data set. I've capitalized model there because it is our second asset. So when you've explored a story, what that'll tell you is it'll give you a really good insight into your data set and get, get you very familiar with your data set and make sure that you don't see anything weird going on in the data set. Because if you built a model on a data set with bad data, it's not a very good model. Um, then, of course, the next thing is that it'll give you a lot of confidence in the model that it has built itself because you're very, you understand what it's telling you, you understand the general types of insights the model is providing, and the types of predictions that it will give you as well. Then you could take your model that backs the data set and you can export it. That's what we, we call it right now. We export it back to Salesforce, even though we're in Salesforce. Um, and then you can use that model for scoring. Now, Skip, always, as usual, gave you the forward-looking statement thing. Um, this is very forward-looking. So you're seeing something today that no one else is gonna show you at Dreamforce um, because it's mine. <laughs> uh, so this is the scoring API. So once you've taken that model, this is one of the ways that you can leverage your model yourself as a developer, right? Um, we give you three different ways of leveraging that model. So again, this is something that is coming soon, right? I wanna make that very clear. Uh, but I'm, I've done this here in JSON. I'm gonna show you an example of a, of a Git repo that you guys can check out yourselves that uses some Apex, um, which is actually available to you today if you wanted to play with it. And uh, anyway, going into the, the actual three ways you can invoke the scoring API, uh, you can call slash predict and you can feed it an entity. 
right? Like, here's my opportunity ID. Here's the, the prediction definition. If you've ever exported to Salesforce, it's created a prediction definition and a model underneath it. And what you're going to get out of this is, I, w I predict that the value of the thing that you wanted to maximize or minimize will be this. Here are the reasons why I think it's like that. And if you've made any actionable variables, you've marked var some of the columns in your data set as things that you as an end user can change, it will also give you some information saying, if you'd like to improve the number, or whether that's up or down, here are some actions that Einstein thinks or the model says you can take in order to improve your score. But we don't just give you the ability to do that with just here's an opportunity. We give you the ability to override column values or even add column values. Because as we all know in Einstein Analytics, a lot of those data sets aren't just raw data coming out of your opportunity objects. You might have enhanced those things with some aggregations, some calculations that you've done. You might have joined a couple of different data sets together to make a, a more useful data set to you, right? You might have added third party data. So this allows you to actually add in values to your columns and say like, I've pulled this out of some other API or whatever, here are all the values that you need. Um, there's actually a warning section in our representation that comes back that will tell you if you're missing any columns, things like that. I'm not gonna show you that right now, but it is there. And then the third thing you can do with this is you can also just feed it your own data. So you can imagine you're in an on-premise system and you are reading values out of the table and you wanna score these things. So you've been working with a data set that is your sample data in Einstein Analytics, right? All your historical data. And you built a model and you really like it, you think it's great, and now you wanna actually score a row. Well, you don't, that row might not exist in Salesforce. So of course, you can actually send us just the fields with no entity ID and, we, and the, the values for those fields and we'll give you back a prediction. So with that, I'm gonna pop over to a demo. I've linked a GitHub here. This is a component, it's a Lightning component that is available. There's a button at the bottom that says deploy to Salesforce. I wrote this last Thursday by forking somebody else's GitHub repo and switching some code around so that it actually uses our API. Um, so thanks to, to whoever T Hedges is. And uh, <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll pop into the Git repo and I'll also show you what the component looks like in real life. So first up, I'll steal Chris's page. Okay, so here we are in a, uh, a straight up org and I'll just quickly pop into an opportunity object. So this component on the right, sales cycle and likelihood to close. This is actually populating the predicted value here, right? Predicted close date is 31.5 days away. Here's the reasons why, right? From a baseline, we assume that all opportunities are gonna close in 53 days. But this one's a little better than that because customer value is between this amount and customer segment is SMB, right? We know in that case it closes a lot faster, right? Um, things you can improve, right? You could try to change your route to market, right? These are things you can actually improve that it's giving you as suggestions. So these are, these are all things that I've called using Apex, right? And I've gotten back the results, I've parsed it, I've thrown it back on the screen. I can come over here, I can show you likelihood to close. In this case, it only has a 42% likelihood to close and we have no recommendations. There's nothing we think you can do to this record that will actually make it better. Another example of this over here, for example, in help desk, I can pop in here and this is predicting CSAT. So these are all different models that we've worked with using Einstein Analytics. We've deployed these models into this separate entity and we're using that to predict values and give you scores directly on the entity page. If you wanna see how we're actually doing that in the setup stuff, I'll pop into the app builder. Oh, come on, just type lightning. And we'll pop into that help desk page. 
So there's my entity that I've dragged in, right? It shows up in the custom entities down here at the bottom left. And over here on the right side, I've got a bunch of things that I can fill in in order to customize this, right? So I can change the ranges that will highlight green and red. Um, right now, you can't change the colors other than green and red, but I know if you want to fork my repo, please feel free and edit it and go for it. Um, moving into the actual Git repo, Um, I'll just I'll actually pull up the Apex code quickly here and just give you a, a look at it. So here's the actual uh, code that is, I can make this bigger. All right, there you go. So here's the actual code that I'm using to populate that widget, right? I'm creating a prediction input representation. In this case, I am just giving it an entity ID and a prediction definition ID, right? Uh, the entity ID, of course, is coming from the page. The prediction definition ID is coming from the configuration that we gave it. Um, I am making a call to predict. And then down here, I have a whole bunch of parsing code reading out the actual values of this thing. I'm not going to go into the details here, uh, but please feel free to explore it yourself, play around with it. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be around later, so I'd be happy to answer them. I'm going to hand it back to Skip now. Okay, thanks, Mike. <clears throat> so I'm going to show a couple of slides and get right into another demo, so we'll make it fun for the last uh, few minutes here. Um, we have an SDK for analytics um, that actually encompasses a web SDK, mostly for Lightning, and an Apex SDK. And what we've done is built out several Lightning components and APIs that you can now use to embed analytics and, importantly, interact with it. Um, one of the cool ones is an API component. We call it the Wave SDK. Wave is the older name for Einstein Analytics. And this gives you API access to all of the data sets, dashboards, and that sort of thing. And you can do this because um, you, can, you need it because you can't get to REST APIs easily from Lightning, as you've probably uh, experienced if you've done any Lightning component dev. Um, we also have events that can be fired by you to tell the dashboard to do something as well as receiving events that tell you the dashboard has, the selection has changed. So the user clicks inside it. So you can make Lightning react to analytics and analytics react to Lightning. And the demo will show that in just a second. Um, you can also do things like discover which dashboards are on the page. So you can say, drop in my component and say, what's out there? What can I then talk to? And you get back things like the IDs and names and so forth that you can then use to get the metadata and build out things like filters, selections, and so forth. And I'll, I'll show you an example of that in a second. And then um, we have an Apex SDK for you to execute queries. And this is interesting because a lot of times when you get back analytics query results and you want to do something with it and feed it to something, whether it's in Lightning or even back into a dashboard using what's called an Apex step. So you can do some pretty cool things there because sometimes it's easier to do things programmatically than it is to try to do it with SQL queries and so forth. Um, it's just times when programming is actually easier. Um, Apex steps are really neat. I have a demo for this. You can actually use that to pull data directly from your Salesforce app into the dashboard. And what you have to keep in mind is that this still has all of the limits of Apex. You have the 27 megabyte heap, you have the API call limit and things like that. So I don't think you can do millions of things like analytics can, but you can do the real time stuff which says bring in the most recent results into the dashboard. I'm going to bring up a cool demo at the very end for what's called Fortnite Analytics, and I'll walk you through this. We'll come back to this slide if we need to. This has been my fun therapy app to build for Dreamforce, because we've been building things like the an uh, analytics voice demo and things like that. So I'll show you something kind of cool here to bring in data externally. So with that, let's pop into the demo org. We're over here somewhere. Um, these same demos are being shown at a booth down in Einstein Park downstairs on the first floor, so feel free to drop by and you can see those in more detail. Um, these are all designed to show you some cool things and explore analytics inside of Lightning. So in this, we have Lightning components on the left that use the SDK to pull in things like dashboard, data sets, and so forth. And on the right, we have the embedded dashboard components that you've probably seen inside of App Builder and that sort of thing. So we can pick a different dashboard here. Uh, let's go to my demo app. And I'm going to pick the dashboard. Oh, let's pick demo dashboard and see how that does. <coughs> we built this earlier at a, um, another demo session. 
one demo dashboard, load. Well, let's try another one. There we go. I'm going to pick a data set like the Opportunity Demo data set, just a simple data set. This is not a pretty dashboard. This is just me kind of dragging and dropping things and wiring it together. And you've probably seen how someone can easily wire together widgets and charts and graphs where you can, you know, click on things like, you know, set the stage name to closed one and the charts and graphs all adjust dynamically. You can do this with no code. But a lot of times our customers say, hey, you know, that's really cool, but I need more control over the UI. And importantly, I've got a UI in Lightning. I don't want to recreate everything in the dashboard. So from the Lightning side, this is the, the kind of geeky view on the left. It's going to show you how to build it. But you can wire this into any Lightning application. So let's pick that same dimension. It's called stage here. And it goes off and says, what are the valid values for stage that map into the same ones we saw here, like we saw closed one. So let's go down here and pick it again. And I'm going to use the lightning dual pick list to select it. And this is actually building up a JSON payload down here at the bottom. And I know the font's kind of small, but you can see this here. This is the payload we're going to fire to tell analytics to do that particular selection. So let's go ahead and uh, scroll up and hit fire. And you'll see Einstein shot the little lightning bolt over and we told the dashboard to do something. Now you would never build a business user app that looks like the left. This is for devs to learn how to use it. But the cool thing is, is you can now wire this into any kind of application you want to. And one of the things we like to show is it built into a record page. So I'm going to pick Burlington Textiles. And if you've been using Salesforce, you're probably familiar with all these standard demo data. And I've embedded a dashboard here that has a mode on it that's controlled by a particular field in the record. And in this case, it's driven by the value of private here. Private's either true or false. And what I do is I say, if it's private, show more detail. If it's public, show less detail. So let's edit this. And who here is familiar with force record data? So it's a really cool object. You can actually put it onto your page, and you say, Look at the record that I'm looking at. Look, give, me, give me back the record and all the fields. And when things change, I can then react to it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to react to it, and I'm going to fire an event and say, something has changed. Tell the dashboard, do something. Change the view in this case. So let's go to not private and click save. And you'll see the dashboard has changed there immediately. No need to refresh the page. It's all live, in line. And it's based upon the values coming from the, the forced uh, record, the, in this case, the standard S object. So the cool thing is, is you can map this into almost anything. This is just an example. In the future releases, we'll do more and better editors in things like App Builder. So you can go through here and programmatically wire things together. And our vision for the future, again, the forward-looking statement, is to give you access to most, if not all, the dashboard state directly in Lightning. So you can move things back and forth very easily. And you know, we've talked about the programmatic world with Lightning and JavaScript and that sort of thing. But we also want to support the declarative world with App Builder lightning flows, and so forth. OK, we've got a couple minutes left, so let's jump back in over here. And I'm going to show you a couple of fun things. This is a geo map using a lo uh, locations. And this is actually a lightning tree on the left-hand side built from an, a query in Analytics. We did a SQL query, and we said, get these locations. And these are actually Starbucks coffee locations. And if you start clicking around, It'll zoom in on the state and show you the locations and that sort of thing. So this is now Lightning being driven by analytics data, but also Lightning telling the dashboard what to show inside it. And the dashboard on the right is a standard dashboard built using a GeoJSON map. So let's take that a little further, and let's do the page navigation. And in this one, I've got um, five pages here. And I added one for a customer I was talking to earlier. And the cool thing is, is this Lightning tab set is built using the dashboard metadata, so it's fully dynamic. So if you add pages into your dashboard, it's going to change what's displayed in the tabs. And when you click the tab, it actually changes the page in the dashboard like so. So Lightning up here, Analytics down here, and the two talking directly to each other. And to make it fun for Dreamforce, we have image map navigation. You've seen image maps before where you give it some coordinates, and you click on it, and it gives you back an event. Well, now this has the Astro page, the Cloudy page, Einstein, Cody, and Appy. And these are just doing the cool little transitions between pages. So full analytics on the right. This is not a real business app. It's just kind of fun to show. But the point is, is you don't, you're not tied to analytics dashboards as being the way to drive all your UI. 
And then Apex Steps give you the ability to pull data in from Apex directly. This is an Apex Describe call here for opportunities. And this is a query based upon the binding inside it. So if I click ID, account ID, is private, it's actually rerunning that against Apex every time and building up this table. So now we have a fully dynamic dashboard table built from a, a Apex query, basically running the, the, uh, SQL, the SQL call underneath the cover. Then we have things like mocks, where we're actually mocking up the data in an S object with the JSON body. And if I modify this, every time I store it, a little trigger goes off, an event gets fired, and the dashboard updates here. This uses things like platform events and triggers and that sort of thing. So some fun integrations. And you can build live dashboards, such as Twitter Live, where we're getting live data from the Twitter API through an Apex callout. So this goes to the callout, pulls in the Twitter data, and even things like the hashtag list. Oh, somebody deleted my data. Oh, they deleted the hashtags. Well, this is actually users coming from that. And each of these can be dynamically updated. Like, let's move Brett down a bit, and let's move Alex up, and we'll click Update. And you see it updates the list over here inside of Analytics. So the two are fully interconnected. And finally, I mentioned, let's go into Fortnite. Who here plays Fortnite or has kids that play it or knows somebody who plays it? You're probably familiar with it. Well, what I did is built a thing that says, go to a Fortnite API and pull in the user data, the player data, which has things like the wins, uh, the kills, the hours played, which parents love to see because they find that their kids are playing a lot more than they thought. And I'm going to add to this a player I just found whose name is 7NOSSS. So let's see if this works. So let's put in 7NOSS, S-E-V-E-N-N-O-S-S. -S -S. He's on PC and do a lookup. And what this does is it does a lookup against the API, and it stores a cached version of it, and it goes off and reruns the data flow, pushes the data up to, to it, and then shows it. And 7OS now appears in the dashboard here. So this is kind of cool, because what we did is we used the API to push the data up there, and then we listened for the platform event that's run by the data flow, and it tells us when this thing has successfully succeeded. Then we fire a lightning event and we tell the dashboard to redraw yourself and pull in the data again from either the Apex call or directly from the data set in analytics. And you can then go in here now and say, let's compare the wins and win rate. And let's compare Ninja with 7NOS. And you see even 7NOS got added to this list here dynamically. So fully dynamic dashboards, never have to refresh. You don't have to go into analytics to do all these cool things. And then to make one more fun thing here, this is a map that is an image from the most, a fairly recent map from like two weeks ago with a GeoJSON map laid on top of it. And this is real analytics data sets. And when you hover over it, you can see the IDs, lazy links, uh, tilted towers, um, loot lake, and that sort of thing. If you've played Fortnite or heard your kids talk about it, you're probably familiar with some of these. And if you pick one like Pleasant Park and zoom in, uh, let's see, click on it. This is the beginning of a simulation where we're going to feed in data from Apex and show the number of players in a particular location, number of chests, and that sort of thing, and sort of simulate a game, and maybe even give you controls where you can move around a bit. So not really playing Fortnite, just kind of showing what real-time analytics could look like in this. Um, and then I've got a thing that will show different images, but it's not quite finished yet, so we're still kind of working in progress. So with that, I want to jump back in and show you our kind of call to action things. Um, we've got some cards up here that we'll hand out. I'll get them out of my bag here that show you how to use the force.com, the SFDX plugin that Chris showed. Um, we've got a bit.ly link, you go to that. There's a cool little guide you can walk through and you can play with all the stuff you saw today and work with that. We also have some cool trailheads, again, for templates. Analytics itself has lots of templates. Discovery has uh, lots of uh, trailheads. So please go learn those and reach out to us in the community, let us know. We'll be here afterwards for questions. We're also, again, downstairs uh, with a booth in the Einstein Park. Um, if you're interested in analytics, come to MENA Gallery, 111 MENA. Uh, we've got a bunch of analytics experts hanging out there, listening and talking and so forth. And with that, we'd like to say thank you. <clears throat> Enjoy the rest of Dreamforce. We look forward to working with you.